And with that, we welcome you back. As the sun begins its descent, we are turning up because it is time to win some medals here in Antwerp, Belgium, here in the Flanders region. We have taken over the city square all week long. And uh, wow, what an emotional run it has been as our two gold medal games are set as well as our bronze medal games. So just four games on the schedule. France and Canada will lace them up. These new rivals meeting for the first time at this stage in an international competition. The defending champs, China, and the hot Lithuanian squad led by Special K. That's how things look on the women's side. This is how things look in the crowd. The Belgian men will be playing for bronze. Uh, but we have fans from all different lands in the stands and hoping that their country will walk away with, uh, with at least some type of precious medal. Kyle Montgomery, AKA the voice in your ear. We will soon be hearing from FIBA president, Mane Nyang, as we are about uh, seven minutes away from getting to the first bronze medal game. So we'll enjoy some entertainment until then, and again, I wait to hear from Mr. Niang. Y'all stick around. The third place games are on the way.
Hello, hello Antwerp, hello Belgium, all the time on screen, you are the star. Before the first game of the last session, Sura plays the Shaya Euphemia. Ten minutes to for the bronze medal of FIFA 383 World Cup. It's time to get to our first third place game. Kyle Montgomery, a.k.a. The Voice. I'm still riding with you. I'm still rocking with you. It's time to get to the medals. This is what you play for. China will lace them up against Lithuania. China coming up. Just short against France in the semifinal. Lithuania losing by two to Canada. As the French and the Canadians will go for gold. This for bronze. Monica Gugelowskite, Gabrielle Soska, Camila Natsiskate, and Martina Petronate represent this Lithuanian team whose men's team is in the gold medal game. China who won gold at our 2019 edition of the World Cup in Netherlands. This time, playing for a medal, but of a little less quality. <laughs> These dudes, they've been on fire. That's why the smoke is up there. DJ Laz and DJ Dysfunctional. What's good? They're gonna listen back to the broadcast. They didn't even know they were on TV. He's got the 15 seconds of fame. They've been keeping it lit here every single day with MC Vincent Royette and MC Lightning on the mic. There's ref Danius. He's been up. And he's got two teams still in play for a medal. Special K and Zaitin Jang, the two stars of their respective teams. They're looking for their first medal ever in a women's national competition. You see both flags, the Chinese flag flying and the Lithuanian flag flying. We're going to see which one is still flying at the end of this 10-minute sprint. I need some, some throat lozenges. I need to fly to the pharmacy. Lili Wang, she got major game. She's been the top scorer on this women's team for China. She's an Olympian. So is Jaiting Zhang. Camila Nazi Kate. She uh, isn't an Olympian yet, but she might be well on her way. The top three medalists will go on to the next World Cup, and if you medal there, then you get a ticket straight to the Olympics. Here's the head-to-head. -head. They met just once before. China won by four points on day three in Antwerp. So you'll rewind back to that. And 
That was a part of China's three-in-one group play campaign. Lithuania trying to get some get back here. It's going to be a battle of the bigs on the inside. Look out for Grigalowskite and Jane. Nice guard play. You got Lili Wang and Gabriela Shoska will be defending her a good bit, as well as Nazi Skate. Okay, this game is underway. Bronze. Shai Ting Chang. No. She'll get it over to Cal. And she puts it up and in to get the scoring started for China. Nazi Skate pulls the trigger and she will deliver. The reverse is missed. Two-one lead for Lithuania. Jump hook, Grigalowskite, not happening. <laughs> Underneath score, Jating Zhang, 2-2. Two -two. China climbed all the way back into their contest against France from eight, from an eight point deficit and somehow made a game of it only to see France win by a count of 17 to 16. It was an incredible game and China had their shot, but instead of gold, it's bronze. And that's impressive too. Speaking of impressive, Petra Naite, she's been a defensive menace this entire tournament. And she's gonna leave, leave China with six seconds to shoot. Lili Wang lost her like baggage claim. 3-2. Quick move, Shosuke. She's got places to go and buckets to get. 3-3 three, three is where we stand. He was climbing the Great Wall of China down there. As the 6'5 Zhang will reset with her team that was not in the process of shooting, so they'll start at the top of the key. Check ball is good. Back to it we go. Zhang hands it off. Cal steps back, up fake. Oh, and a whistle. Special K. A little too aggressive defensively. There's Cal, down low, steps through, one. She's gonna get that one to drop. Take another look at the reach in, and that's an easy whistle. Official Eddie and official Vlad handling this bronze medal contest. Around comes Shosuke. Nazi Skate setting up shop on the block. Shosuke lets it fly. It goes off the iron. Petra Naite hustling. She corrals the rebound and she's able to draw the foul. A big day for Petra Naite. Could get even bigger. Remember I said that. Petra Naite knocks down the free throw. Could be an X factor. As Special K, uh, ole, ole, ole. Let her go right past. Nazis Kate misses deep. Petra Naite spinning a little bit too much. She needs some different choreography the next time. That ball will go back over to China. But she does have a nose for the ball. Now Wayne, she's doing her dance. Wayne, way off. So 
So a 5-4 lead for China early on, just past two minutes in. And I see Sky Tank trying to do her dance. The crossover is sent away. So her first jank was lost, but she found her way. Met her at the location and swats it out of bounds. Nazi Kaite knocks down the free throw as Zhang will get the score on the inside. And a technical is called on Special K. As official Vlad is telling her to uh, button it up a little bit. Take another look. She's saying that she got an elbow. There's uh, always a lot of contact. Uh, down here. This is 3x3. We let him play. But I'm not the one who uh, maybe felt that elbow. Cal is uh, able to knock it down at the free throw line. Extends China's lead to just two points. It's 7 5 in this 10 minutes sprint to 21. Special K to Grigilowskite back to. Nazi Skate, she earns a trip to the line again and will shoot one. And that one goes down. Here's Jane. What can you do with that? Uh-oh. She, she made her dance, but she couldn't land the two. Shosuke to Petronite, way out deep. Special K sees it roll off the iron. Foul Green trying to keep Jane off the boards. So we get back to it, 8-6. Quick listen into China's huddle. As they look to medal for the second consecutive World Cup. This is the Kree Line 2022 edition. Shoska's pass is deflected off of a knee for a shot clock. 12 ticks to get to it. 6.45 left. Shosuke. She's got speed to spare. And she showed it to Zhang. No choice but to foul. Quick move on the baseline. That'll be six fouls apiece on each team. Next defensive foul. We'll put them both in the penalty. Free throws will follow. Two of them. Special K, Grigalowskite. She wants Special K to come around. Grigalowskite gets faded. Lithuania within one. A lot of fight with this Lithuanian team. Cow gets it down to Juan. And she puts it down again. Juan has been a problem on the interior this whole tournament. Talk a lot about Zhang, but Juan has been impressive. Special K lost to Wilson. As the horn sounds anyway, they were not going to get that shot up. So Lili Wang. She will get it to Jang and then get it right back. High arcing two. She drops it like it's hot. 11-7 lead for China. So 
So uh, my bad. It is not Junwei Cao, as I've been saying. It's Junwei Sal. Around comes Shosuke. She lost that one off her own leg. She wanted some more movement, probably a little bit disappointed in herself, too. Lithuania trailed us by four. Lithuania with a second place finish, the first stop on the women's series this year, their best finish ever. Petra Naite can't come down with the rebound. So she grabbed a jersey full of Wang and Lily Wang. She'll get a chance to shoot two. Foul number seven. Petra Naite. The aggression is good, but you can see Shosuke trying to calm her down. Five and a half to play, and we're already in the penalty. It's one of those games where the double penalty could be an issue. Shosuke couldn't drop that. Rebound, Grigalowskite. She'll snatch it. Offensive foul. <laughs> The Lithuanian fans are just, they make it tough. Our officials doing a great job, but they are letting them hear it. Six point advantage for China. Shane trying to stop her is like trying to stop a storm. No hope. Meantime, Natsikate misses it. She's there to follow it though. Wang, Hezzy, baseline, puts it up, but it's packed. Oh, the snatch back, Nazis Kate. Couldn't cash it in. Now, Zhang on the move, tried to drop it off to Juan. That Wilson is giving right back, so they trade goods. Underneath, no. The entry pass is kicked, so a fresh 12. Oh, Sal, up fake, missed the lay. Juan is there to clean up the mess. China's lead out up to seven. Grigalowskite chunks the deuces, no. Juan sets up on the right wing. She's gonna get it down to the post office, but an offensive foul is called on Jane. No free throws on an offensive foul. This is the bronze medal game. We're in the twilight of this tournament. The sixth day of play. The interception leads to the mid-range. Jay off the glass. Nazis Kate's pass is a little long. Shosuke tracks it down. Shosuke steps back, high arc on the two. No go. Lili Wang, quick, down low. Juan continuing to do her thing. 17 to eight. China's lead continues to swell like a pregnant belly. They get it down low as Zhang will put it up and in again. It's a nine point lead. But the one here in some trouble right now. Let's listen in on their huddle. All right, as we get back to it, 
Here's Sal. Sal over to Wayne. They got Jang trying to set up shop down low. They get it to her. Does she get it up in time? She does. Another bucket as China's lead continues to grow. Nazis Kaite is going to finish with the lay. A warning for Green for defending in the restricted area after a May bucket. Just over three minutes to play. And China has come out and played fearlessly and fiercely. Juan, drop step, count that. Game point for China with the bronze medal at stake. Grigalowskite will put it up and in. Wang will try to put it away. What a pass, nearly. Petronite got the thievery, couldn't put the two down. So 238 left. Love to love to Milos. What's up, man? Appreciate you watching. It's the last last chance here for Lithuania. Not this possession, but to medal. And uh, trailing by nine with 225 to go. The hopes are bleak for the ladies in green. Credit China. They have been a force. Wang, the runner. Juan is put on the Enlio floor. And she will take her time to get up. And Juan could put this one away at the free throw line. One, whoa. One with the magic touch at the line. China take the bronze here in Antwerp over Lithuania. Back-to-back -back medals, gold in 2019. Bronze in 2022. A hard fought battle to this point for Lithuania, but they did not have enough in the tank to deal with the force that is China. Li Li Wang starred on this Chinese team in a blowout win, and she receives the post game interview with Julian DeBove, who's standing by right now. Zhu. Let's get it over to you as uh, they are in place. You. We, we saw you very disappointed after the semifinal. Where did you find the strength and the energy to come back to win the bronze medal? Uh, it's not very uh, peace and so smooth to, uh, for, for everything. Uh, uh, it's an opportunity to uh, practice more and they will grow. Okay. China won gold at the World Cup in 2019. China won a medal at the Tokyo Olympics. China wins another medal here at the World Cup. What does it say about the quality of Chinese 3x3? Uh,就是中国对德国,过去德国非常多的,呃,这样那样的一些奖牌,呃,包括奥运会的,呃,那这次的这个奖牌对于你们来说是有什么样的意义? Uh, uh, 因为我们现在这批人跟之前的那批人都不一样 
无论是之前他们拿第拿第一也好，或者是现在我们拿第三也好，我觉得都是我们自己一步一步拼出来的，对。Uh, because uh, in Ch uh, Ch Chinese team, the uh, players are uh, quite different uh, from before. Uh, but uh, whatever uh, before or now, uh, uh, although the players are different, but uh, every steps they fight their best to get this pedal. Congratulations. Yes, a big congratulations is in order for China, as they proved once again to be dominant here at the World Cup stage. The bronze at the Tokyo Olympics just last year, the gold medal in 2019, now here in 2022 at the Krylon World Cup. They take bronze over Lithuania and their flag is flying. We are still flying. This has been a surreal final day of play as we get set up for the men's bronze medal game but only after the highlights from that last contest. Lithuania has been uh, such a, so impressive throughout this contest in earning their way uh, to this spot to play for bronze. Grigalowskite was finding her touch, but China was in a rush to that 21 point mark. And again, they are loaded with weaponry. Lili Wang, she was the top gun, while Zhang was bringing the base down low. Unstoppable on the block. Juan as well. Just her continual activity. Not to forget about Sal. She missed the layup there, but she wasn't missing a whole lot in this tournament. She was really putting the pressure on the interior. And China exercised their size advantage with the Great Wall of China. Jiting Zhang, six foot five. And good luck trying to stop her from getting to where she's going. The frustration started to show late for the Lithuanians. And with one final wave of the magic wand, this one was done. China, bronze medalist here in Antwerp. And again, the men are up next, an emotional win for China. And congratulations to them, 21 to 11 is the way that, uh, that finished. France and Canada, that's for gold. That's coming up later. Meantime, FIBA president Himane Nyang is addressing the crowd here. Let me give you one look at the men's bracket. The rue, road to Olympic game. A partir d'ici, aller à Paris 24. Ça c'est grâce à vous les fans, grâce aux organisateurs. Mais je voulais simplement vous dire que j'ai voulu vous amener un peu de soleil de l'Afrique. On a eu pas mal de soleil, mais la pluie hier, effectivement, j'ai oui. un tout petit peu. With the female president, the African sun is, on, is in Anvers for one week. Et je ne peux pas terminer sans dire merci aux joueuses et aux joueurs qui ont animé pendant toute la semaine cette belle compétition. Merci beaucoup. Merci beaucoup. Au plaisir de vous revoir. Merci. Mr. Amanyang, FIBA president. Amanyang, FIBA president. A visionary. A crowd favorite and a FIBA family favorite, without a doubt. I'd say uh, FIBA's in good hands. I gotta, I gotta get out to Mali. Maybe pay, uh, pay him a visit one day, hopefully. We will see, we will also see who will win the next contest? This, I'm telling you right now, this will feel like a final. That's because the Lions are back. They couldn't beat Serbia, the number one team in the men's competition, in the semis. But they still can walk away with a medal. 
you can see what they have behind them and who they have behind them. The crowd serving as the fifth man, so to speak. And they'll try to put a battery in their back and give them some extra energy. As they'll go up against a hobbled Franz team who uh, will not have Anton Ato injured his ankle in the semifinals. A close loss for them. Uh, certainly wishing him a speedy recovery, as I, as I said. But with no sub, Franz will have to fight against the odds, will have to fight against the crowd if they hope to come out of this one with a win. Go, 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 Thibaut. Must see TV is back on. Pull up a chair. He's joined by Maxime Devout. The new addition to this Belgian national team, Brian Devault. Clark Kent, Nick Sellis, the Olympian himself. And last but not least, must see TV, Thibaut Vervoort. Here's France's team. Alex Vierare, Leopold Cavalier, Franz Seguela, and of course, Anton Eto, who again injured his uh, ankle in the semifinals. Uh, actually saw him uh, in the back. And, uh, he, was, he was devastated. He was devastated that he would not be able to play. So he's going to have to watch this one from the bench and cheer his team on as he is courageous enough to come out here and join them. Don't expect him to play, but he's coming out here with his guys, and that that is admirable. Mr. Big Shot, he's got big character and big heart. So he'll try to give his team some energy from the bench here. He's the leading scorer coming into today's action. And missing his uh, shooting ability and defensive pressure. We will see if Franz can dig deep and pull off a huge upset here in the Lions' den. Marcos Nicalides and Yasmina Yuris. They will officiate this one. To vote for board, we saw him go bananas in Tokyo last year as Belgium just finished shy of the podium. Scored 61 points, had a trio of game winners. Uh, he served notice to the world on the Olympic stage. Now he's in his own backyard as his personal stage. Going up against Leo Cavalier, the big man. He's caught a couple bodies in this tournament. They got the clever play of Vierale. Good addition in a new French national team under new coach Karim Sochou. Outstanding job of putting this squad together. They don't have all their parts right now. So the Lions. They're looking to make prey of Le Bleu. The fans are turned. The Belgian flags are flying. The countdown is on. Four, three, X. Let's go. Bronze medal on the line here as Vorvort. Quick move on the baseline. Finishes with the reverse. Virare, he attacks the rack. He's going to get the ball back. 
Sagela. He's down. The shot goes down. That's a two-piece and a foul off the ball. Villare. He will also shoot the free throw. So Alex Villare. Big body guard at the line. He's going to give France a two-point lead. Again, the odds stacked against him. Vervoort, he misses it. And as does Duvall. Cavalier with Franck Seguela going to work. He chunks the deuces. Off the iron, it flies, the big fella. Cavalier, he'll turn around, the jump hook though is broke. Duput. And that's a blue foul, first on France. Dupout, excuse me. Devault to Sellis. Clerk Kent hands it over. Vervoort. Doesn't even get a chance to give it to him because there's a foul down on the block. Sellers taking his time. Back door, he was trying to find the vault. The vault flying in there, he's unable to track it down, so. 3-1 game, France. Playing with a lot of heart. Segala on target like infrared. But he's slow to defend Celis. Virarek. He steps back and he's shooting his shot like he's trying to get a date. Seven two. Depout. Gets that one to roll down. Segela, he will take his time. Cavalier. Fierare. Misses his next two attempts. Cavalier, he rocks the rim. The ball was on the ground. Ato giving his team direction from the bench. Unable to play again with that ankle injury. So around comes Must See TV. This is pressure defense from Le Bleu. As they lead early here, eight to three. Obviously, Belgium, the four seed, and what you would consider the favorite in their own backyard here in the Lions' den. Oh, to both perverse his defenders, shaken, not stirred. It's 8 4. He gave him the shoulder shimmy and got out of there. You can add that one to the mixtape, but Franz still lead this thing 8 4. Fierare misses the lay. Sellers back to DePau. DePau, he throws it in reverse. Didn't even use his rear view. Cavalier up and he's fouled. Seven twenty-four left in this game. France playing with plenty of heart. Nine five. Nick Sellers with the stop and go. The fans 
here in the Lions Den, maybe a little bit antsy now. A little hot under the collar. That free throw from Sellis trickles in. So the fans trying to give Belgium a boost here. All right, Vierare, he makes his move. It's blocked underneath. 9-6. Sellis drops it. It's wet from mid-range. All of a sudden, the Lions are waking up now. And a TV timeout. As both teams will reset here. A 9-7 game, 3,000 piece. Let's listen in on the Lions huddle. Like two twos or two three twos. They're playing play with, play with three guys. Okay. They're playing with three guys. Hey, DJ Laz, the game is seven more DJ minutes. dysfunctional we up top five. doing their thing. I'm not sure you can add any more energy to what we're already seeing here underneath this Magic Sky canopy. It is going down in a major way. Packed house with a bronze medal at stake. Franz has come out of the gates quickest. And a foul on the two attempts. Look again, there is contact. And Villarre will go back up to the line. No rim needed. Villarre. We'll try to make it two for two. And he puts it through. Franz had a chance to, to win in overtime last game. And not to remind you, but Cavalier missed the second of two free throws and opened the door for Lithuania. The ball, I like your cut, G. Lobby must have did it. Actually, it was Bavort. <laughs> but you know what I mean. Say, Gala, he lets it go. It comes up Kevin Hart, short, and that is a, should be a, they're, they're asking for a shot clock violation. But no, I got caught up looking at Ato myself. He had me convinced. I, DePout, he's waiting for Musty TV to come around. DePout, he's on the move, takes the contact, take that back. Segala with the athletic block. And official Marco says it's travel. Take another look at that block from Segala. He extended his arms a few extra feet and spanked the Wilson. 11-8 lead, France against the Lions, must-see TV. He's not knocking them down. As must-see TV is having some reception issues. Each team has made it more difficult on him. Again, understanding just how dangerous of an offensive player he is. Credit France right now. This is a French team playing with three players right now. In, an, in a hostile environment and still managing to hold them off for the moment. We'll, if they win this, this will be a signature win for France that they won't forget for a long time. Meantime, the vault patiently waits for Villarre to fly by. He's going to get Belgium within two as Villarre will elevate. He misses. And the tip is a no-go for Cavalier. 
for Vort. Over to DeVault, up fake. DeVault will pull up, free throw line. Probably should have continued with the drive. I think that was an opportunity for DeVault to really attack the rim. Of course, the open shot from the free throw line, not a, not a bad choice, but maybe you draw a foul there. Who knows? What do I know? I'm just a commentator. These are the pros. I'll leave it to them. It's VR8. We'll set up on the block. He'll get it in the corner. Say Gala. It ain't that windy yet. 11-9. That's stolen. And Cavalier has it poked away. But not without a foul. Being whistled on the Lions. Five fouls on Belgium. They trail it by two. We're past the midway mark. 450 left in this third place game for bronze. Kyle Montgomery, aka the voice in your ear. Keep your eyes locked on this one. It's gonna be fun down the stretch as Segela misses, but the vault flies in, snatches the rebound. DePau gets it over to the vault for the vault. Find his shot. Instead, he finds the vault, but he sold the bag. Fierare, Cavalier on the move. They don't get it up in time. DePout waiting for the screen. DePout down low. Clerk can't. No, sir. The hustle from DeVault. I think that's going to go out off of DeVault. It's going to be blue ball. Cavalier, he misses the tip twice as DuPont will come away with it. Vervoort over to Maxi. DuPont. Oh, off the miss. Vervoort's runner. Uh uh. Vierale. He's on a drive, straight to the rim, and the French Federation is on their feet. 12-9. With a chance to add to that on the line, we got to listen in on that French huddle. What I want, what I want, is to take a pick. We play a guy completely opposed. We put them on the two-man game. So this the message from Anton Eto in that huddle as he's leading his team from the bench. He says, don't speak, save your energy, slow down, play the two-man game. So you have to be a player coach in 3x3. He is the definition of that now. Unable to play with that ankle injury. Look what his team has done to this point. They lead it by three and probably. And that ball off of France. Belgium. We'll start with it, top of the key. Lavort makes his move. He's trying to get free. Villarre sticking with him. Lavort fades away but misses. DePout, he will swing left. They leave some space for the vault, and Villarre is called for the foul. Thank <laughs> you. 
Oh, DePaul thought about it. Instead, he's going to drive, lean back, lean back. He went Fat Joe on him. Belgium within two now. Cavalier, good at the strike. His first time playing at a 3x3 World Cup. And this time he handles the pressure at the line. France back out by four. Under three to go. Duvall, good patience. As for Abort is the one who set the table for the dish. Segala behind the back move. Wild shot goes to the Lions. They know they got to get to it and get to it quick. Oh, there's going to be a lot of disappointed fans in here. Sellers takes a bump, and he'll get a chance to shoot one. Foul number five on France. Clerk Kent. He will take his time. And he knocks it down. So the Lions really being put to the test by a three-man French team. Pierre he will pull up short range off the iron. Vierare, he's got Segala underneath. What a find. France playing some beautiful 3x3 hoop. Inspired game by France. Go to board, up fake. He will get it back. He is hacked. Man, it is turned up. And the Lions' den is starting to wake up. They've been a bit confused so far. I think they expected Belgium to run away with this one. But France had something to say about it. Celis to Vervoort. He passed up the first shot, takes a more difficult one. And that stroke is broke. Cavalier, Villarale, he lost the ball. Misses the two. The ball, he's going to reset. Clerk Kent drives, spins. He's looking for must see TV. Vervoort gets it back to Sellis. We got ourselves a one point game. Seguela. With Vierade over there, Devolk with the thievery. Now Celis is going to make good with the goods. Vierade, he was driving crazy like Ricky Bobby. He gets called for the charge, and that has charged up this crowd. They are ignited here in the Lions Den on their feet as we have a 15 15 game. France again, no sub. Can they hold off the Lions in their own backyard? And Tonato, he's trying to inspire his team. This is inspiring because of his injury. They got to dig deep. They've got to find something in the tank 
to go the distance here. 41 seconds remaining. Must see TV has been struggling with a shot in this game. DePout, he gets whistled for the offensive foul. And the crowd is expressing their displeasure. Yasmina will take a look and see if that call will stand. Oh, you can see the bout does extend that off arm. And you wonder why, because it was past the defender. Didn't have to. Sometimes that natural movement as you're moving quickly. But yeah, that that's the that's the right call. I know that I know that this crowd doesn't like it, but that's the right call. You cannot swing your arm. Now he wasted a layup, so here we go now. 32 ticks. Fiorale missed it. Sellers can't come away with it. The vault trying to tie it up. He does. So you the the, the utility guy gets in there and makes a huge play. The vault. A jump ball is as good as a steal. Twenty-three seconds. Fifteen, fifteen. France, Belgium. Here in Antwerp for a bronze medal. If you don't like this, you don't like three x three. Clerk Kent with the dribble move. Must see TV. Whoa. Rattles off. 10 seconds. Segala to the cup. He punches it down. France with a hold on. Vervoort, he goes in. He finishes the layup. We're going to overtime. Here's a look at St. Gala's dunk that put France up, but with less than four seconds to get to the rim, Must See TV takes over the show. And we got another episode. First team to score two in overtime wins a bronze medal. France start with it. A two ball would end it. Cavalier trying to use that size. He lost it out of bounds. Ball back over to Belgium. Sellers to Bervoort. Bervoort makes his move. He'll get it over to Sellers. Sellers defended by Villarare. It's the bout. Around comes Segala. Cavalier is free. He misses the layup. They let him play. DePau thought about it. Vervoort. From way out. He does not have enough to get that one to the rim.
Alonso. France in another OT. Segala missing. Cavalier will give France the lead. So Le Bleu, all they need is one. Vervoort to Devault. Kicks it out. Dip out. Rebound goes to France. One score will do it. Fierade, filthy crossover. Fist missed it at the rim. Dip out. He'll get it to Vertevoort. Vertevoort. Well short. Vierade to Segala. The double block from Celis. Celis flying in there like Superman. Both arms out. Blocks the shot. Out of bounds. Uh, initially ruled off of France. They want a challenge. Take another look, there's Sellers flying in with his cape in the wind. And it was a heroic block that saved Belgium's chances for now in this game. Official Marcos will take a closer look. The decision has been made. That challenge is lost. So it will indeed be Belgium ball. These players are exhausted. All it takes is one shot. Must see TV does not get the package. Sellis drive. He's looking for Vervoort. Vervoort. Whoa. Short. He flies in off of the Lions. France with the possession. Fierade. He'll attack for a board. He took from the spin class. He missed it. Cavalier. He chucks it from the corner. Wild shot. The ball will track it down. It pulls it off of Celis. The vault. Great effort to hustle this loose ball down. And he was trying to quickly get it to Nick Celis. Celis was not ready. It goes off of his shin. How long can Belgium survive? The French charge. Better believe France is coming again. They lead it by one. All they need is one. Down low, Cavalier is down as well. Nick Sellis does the same thing. So two mistakes by the Belgians in a game where they are just hanging on. They throw it away again. Can they last another possession? We'll find out. Cavalier driving. Wild attempt. And Belgium want to challenge that. And I think that's a smart challenge. Cavalier, that he looked like he threw that out of bounds. And again, if you're just joining us in this game, You've missed a lot. 
But Anton Ato unable to play on this French team. He's been trying to inspire them in the huddle and from the bench. France has been playing three on four. No substitute in this game. Belgium had to fight all the way back to send it to overtime. Here in OT, as you can see, France has taken a one-point advantage. And the Belgians have dodged bullet after bullet after bullet. And they've made a few mistakes here. And you wonder just how much longer they can stay alive with France playing with, with their heart. So much cool. They will look at it, take a long look at it, and decide if this challenge will be won or not. This is huge for Belgium, depending on the decision, which is coming right now. That challenge is won. So they wanted the ball. They got it. It's off of Cavalier. Verbeur will have it. Belgium need two to win. The Pout driving. He's defending, but the layup drops. All even. 17-17. Oh, and Virale was able to track it down. Virale with Celis on the ground. Say Gala getting away on the baseline. This hook is waved away. He, I think that's a three-second call. I could be wrong here. I think that's a three. Shot clock violation, not a three second. Oh yeah, that that is, man, this is why we got the best officials around. That is a shot clock violation. And this crowd is going wild. The Lions Den waiting for Vervoort to do something. He gets it to Sellis. Nick, travel is called. Turnover on the baseline as he drug the pivot foot. Ball back over to Le Bleu as Vierade will move right. The ball is down. Vierade, he'll attack Vodevort, puts it up, it's missed. Loose ball goes to Cavalier. He runs and throws up another one. Sellis will come away with the Wilson. What effort from both of these teams. Fredvort, in and out, oh, nobody's home. I don't know who's going to win this game, but this is the longest game ever. My voice is asking for mercy. All right, Vierade, back cut to Gala. Put on the brakes and France. What an inspirational win for Le Bleu. They steal it in the Lions' den. Belgium devastated. They will come up medalists here in their own tournament in Antwerp. Look at the effort and look at the emotion. What a win for France. Anton Ato did not play. They won this and tears are flowing. Credit to France. What a gutty win in OT. New coach Kareem Sochu embracing his players. Cavalier. Wow. 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 I don't care what side you stand on. You got to stand up for this game. France do it against the odds in enemy territory. Man. Take a, one last look at the feed to Frank Segela as we get it over to Julian Dubov who's with Cavalier right now after that huge win.
Leo, after, after Antoine went down with the injury in the semi-finals, a lot of people thought that you would not be able to compete in this bronze medal game. Where did you find the strength, the energy to, to win this game in an unbelievable overtime? <laughs> Last post-game interview, I told you about our heart. Today the win was in our heart. We were only three. That's an incredible effort from our three. And the fourth one, who was injured, was pushing us every second. And that's all about heart. For your first event, you win a bronze medal at the World Cup. What's the feeling now? I'm a bit honest with you. There's still a bit of disappointment because of the semi-final, you know? I want, I want more. And the three other guys, they want more also. So we're going to come back. Maybe it's not going to be us four. Maybe it's going to be some, somebody better. We don't care. We want friends on the top, on the top of the world. That's going to be next, next World Cup. The one after, I don't care. But we're still hungry. Congratulations, buddy. Thank you. Congratulations. A valiant effort. And that was all heart. I believe in French, they say, care. Yeah. That is what this French team displayed as Cavalier goes and gets some love. Well deserved. Man. Guess what? We, we still have a gold medal game, believe it or not. <laughs> that felt like one. And you can see the look in Maxim Depout's face. Belgium here in Antwerp, their own backyard. They didn't lose a single game the entire tournament. Undefeated coming out of pool play. Straight to the quarterfinals. They get a win to send them to the semis. And they miss on a chance to play in the gold medal game. Losing to Serbia. And then this is how it went down here in the third place contest. From the very outset, France was game. They were ready to play, they feared nothing. There's the shake that I was telling you about. The Ricky Bobby shake and bake from Tibor Borbort. But they turned the channel on Must See TV. They said our interest is elsewhere. The vault and Celis, they laid it on the line, they played incredibly. They played incredibly. Diving for loose balls, but Belgium made far too many mistakes in the overtime period, and that proved to be their undoing. You can think back to the throwaway by DeVolk and also the throwaway by Celis. Uh, travel on the baseline, and you just wondered just how long they could last. That was the first bucket in OT. Vort answers right back to even things up at 17. I'm like her. She's like, oh my goodness. Then this was it. That bucket would put France up. The pout would even it again. This is the overtime period here. As the final score from Frank Segela. That's got the French screaming at home and Nobody more excited than Anton Eto. He hops over to his teammates on one leg, and you can see the dejection from the Lions. But credit, uh, credit Belgium. This is a hard game, and look, you can never look past any team, even with three players. Craziness. 18 to 17 in a game that none of us will soon forget. France. Le Bleu, they do it. Wow. Uh, all we got left now is gold medal games. Get set. We have unfinished business. Those were for bronzes. The biggest prize of them all is still at stake. France and Canada. Couple of rivals. We've seen them face off in the women's series. And uh, France has gotten the better of Canada. Think back to 2019 where 
France won the season in the Women's Series, but Canada won the last event. There's definitely a bit of a, of a rivalry brewing. And you add those ingredients into this concoction, that makes this game flammable. We are about to ignite it. So it, they got to be inspired by what they just saw from the French men. France's women are here. They will walk away with nothing less than a silver. But they're here for gold. They took silver back in 2012. Never a gold. They've had some disappointments in the past couple of years with the two Olympians, Leticia Guapo and Maria Page. But their new additions have been great additions. Hortense Limousin and Miriam Jekundade. Canada has never played uh, this far into an international competition. They have two of the most unstoppable bigs in the entire game. And they have some knockdown shooters and furious defenders on the outside in Casey Bosch and Paige Crozon. This is going to be fun as well. I don't know if it's going to be as long as that last, <laughs> that, that Belgium-France game. This is a 10-minute sprint to 21. There's Darcy Koss here with Canada Basketball. Long time 3x3. -er. I'm sure his hands are probably sweating. It'll get bigger than this. Started with 40 teams, 20 men's teams, 20 women's teams. It's down to two. These two have emerged from the smoke. They compete for gold. Here are our two officials, Yasmina Yuris and Yuyin Su, representing Serbia and Chinese Taipei. They'll keep this game well in hand. Nobody been, been able to handle Leticia Guapo so far. She's continued to climb the scoring charts. She has been uh, for a long time considered top three, and sometimes are the best player in the game. Former world number one she is, and a European champion, an Olympian. France are up 3-1 against Canada again in the women's in women's series history. Canada did win the last stop in 2019. Canada also got to the final of the women's series final last season. This is a team that's con consistently gotten better and better and better. They feel like it's their time. France with a new squad. They stick to two of their core players with Page and Guapo. And they're hoping that this combination is uh, going to be the one that will bring them a gold medal, their first. Are you ready? Almost that time. All right, it's on. Bluff over to, to Bosch. Here's Casey Bosch. She lost it in to Michelle. It's mishandled. The quickness is definitely on the side of Le Bleu. She's a blur. Jay Kundade passed the defense. Click hands. She's a smooth criminal. Doom, doom, digga, doom, doom. La Guapa. She missed it long, so Bosch will set up with Page. Catherine Plouffe to Michelle. Michelle misses it, recovers the rebound. She can't get it. But Catherine is there to get the board. She's on her way up to the free throw line.
misses the freebie. Otans Limousin lost the ball for a moment. That is sent away. The interior feed, look at Jekun Dade. She is d up. Using that length, Nemo Song chauffeurs him to the rim. Paje with the pesky hand. She reaches in and pokes it away. That poked away, Guapo. Limo Song, she drives more than an Uber employee. Three zip. <laughs> Buck and a half into this gold medal final. France, Canada. Kyle Montgomery, AKA the voice in your ear. It's a fight to 21. 10 minutes to get it done as the sisters connect like Siamese twins. 3-1. Bosch down low. Oh, Cat Ploof, she's gonna clean up her own mess. And Canada draw within one. Guapo, she'll kick it out, Jay Kundade. With a couple of hezzies. Wrong flavor on that scoop. Bosch tracks it down. Catherine with the quick move. She sets up. Bloof, but the two is missed. That one is packed. It's time to head to the door. 3-2 as Bloof. Oh, she lost it. Page directing traffic. She's got Bosch in front of her. She, great recovery from Bosch. So with gold on their mind. Seven minutes to go. That one swatted. Oh. Michelle to Catherine. She's tripped up. Ploof, Catherine that is, makes her move. Turn around, high hook, touches nothing. Guapo to Jay Kundade. Limousin. She thought she had a step, but she was going to lose that one out of bounds. She's arguing that it should be off red. But the call is that uh, it'll be Canada Ball. TV timeout. Let's listen in on Le Bleu. All right, here comes Catherine Plouffe. She is driving, but she runs into a detour. Jay Kundade says, go another way. No poutine for you down here. It's 3-2. Croson. Oh, off the backboard. Limousin. 
Yes, Miriam hands it off to Mep. Mep all over the 3x3 map. She's foul right at the rim. So the French Olympian will shoot one here. She's a consummate professional, consummate competitor when you talk about Maria Paget. A lot of people feel like she's the glue that has kept France together over the years, and it's the reason why she's still on this national team. She will get the scoop after the miss. It's a tough assignment for her out there. Michelle Poole sets up Cat. Cat is fouled. Take a look. Nice. That whistle will put Catherine Plouffe on the line. Plouffe's been having an outstanding tournament on this Canadian team. She adds another drop in the bucket. Lee Merson. Oh, that was sick. Pull up, wet. Meantime, it's Michelle to Catherine. Catherine to Crozen. Crozen, drive, knuckleballed it. Limo Song goes down to get it. <laughs> Take another look. As uh, Cannon is able to tie that up and earn the jump ball. So down low they go as Catherine sets her sister up for the score on the inside. 5-4 game. Both these teams want new gold chains. Silver's cool, but gold's the standard. As we approach the midway mark, Pajay threads. Seven to four lead, France. There's a nice feed on the inside. Loof. Oh, wow. Deuces are wild as France is starting to heat up. Nine to five. Look at the thievery from Guapo. She pokes that one away. Page to Guapo. Oh, she is hot as a stove. Michelle Poof will answer right back. They trade twos. And that, yeah, a whistle on Michelle. Squapo was driving. Michelle will check out, Croson is in. There was definitely some contact. I think Plouffe was saying she grabbed me. But it was a hack across the, the arm. Either way, it's La Guapa at the line, and France lead it by five. Oh, Catherine Blue, beautiful move. The step through doesn't go. Bosch with the up fake in the corner. Blue off the iron. Great hustle there as Bosch keeps it alive. Crozen. Plouffe with the quick move. Left her. Guapo. That was a heat check. Rosen has been shooting the two better than most players in the competition. Yet to find her groove. Meantime, the lay is good as France have assumed a five point lead 13 to 8. Boschno. Guapo. She got the rebound. 
Mort tauts Limoso. Limoso. Easy breezy. Oh, Bosch throws it away. Approaching three minutes. And a TV timeout. Canada with some work to do. They trail it by six with three minutes to play. Let's try flip and transition. We need some stops here to bet. We need to lock in. Here we go. We have three minutes left. Let's go. Hey, they're just riding up. Come yeah. on, here we go. Deep bets. Let's do it. Right, so you heard in Canada's huddle, they said we need some stops. Got to get some stops defensively. As France has been all gas, no brakes. Speaking of all gas, no brakes, Limo Song, oh, she got broke off. Big block from Ploof, moves her feet and told her to talk to the hand. Out of bounds off of white as the lady in red starts at the, at the top of the key. Ploof, she's gone. Appears at the rim with a score, and that lead now at five. Paget. She moves right to come left. Limousson navigating her way through the paint, but she doesn't get it up in time. It is a shot clock violation. But France definitely in the driver's seat. This is a 10 minute sprint to 21. And you can see 14 and nine down to the post office as Michelle spins free. Two possession lead for France. And Paget traveled. She, she drug the pivot foot. Here's the poof. Sisters. Oh, look at that teardrop. Paget. She chunks the deuces, but she misses it. Man. Michelle Ploof is giving them the business. This ain't no international trade. 14-12. Both teams trading buckets is Paget. She misses. Ploof going back to work. She'll get it to Catherine. Catherine gets it back from Michelle. Foul on France. All of a sudden, it's tightening up again. Catherine Ploof. She is long on the free throw. Guapo, swatted. That's what six foot three can do for you. Paget, that one also blocked. Ploof, whoa. Wow, white, wow. Foul white. So it looks like Canada's playing more aggressively. The, the Ploofs who are known to be very nice uh, women, they got a mean streak in them. This is savage time. That pass deflected. Michelle cannot put it in. Limousin, mid-range, no. Jay Kundade hits the deck, but that's out of bounds off of White. Canada will take over, minute 22. And France's lead down to just two. Yeah, 
They'll start this one over with Catherine Plouffe down to Paige Croson. Croson kicks it to Bosch. Bosch down low. Laguapa snuffs it out. Mariev Page will swing it. Limoso trying to use that quickness. She fades and she hits. Francis lead at three. We'll see if Canada can respond. Croson down low. Guess who? It's Catherine Blue. Limoso, no. Catherine will clear it. Bosch is still down. Croson with Michelle rested on the bench. They got four to shoot. Catherine loses her footing. Either that or she was tripped up. One way or the other, I, I think that's going to be Franz Ball. You take a look. And yeah, they just, they clicked ankles. 25 ticks. Two point lead for Franz. Page drops it off. Jay Kundade. Out of bounds it goes. Seventeen seconds and a timeout as Canada wants to talk it over. Dribble off of Michelle and set a flare screen. Michelle Plouffe, look at that defense. Clamps from the French. This is for the goal. France has never had it for the women. Only a silver in 2012, 10 years later. They've got gold intentions. Six foul, so they'll look to foul quickly, but Page got away. Seventh foul on Canada. The, the only hope here is for Page to miss a couple of free throws. The veteran at the line misses the first. Now Page will get another attempt. This one goes in. That one kicked out. Blue heaves it. That is it. That is all. Goal goes to France for the first time ever as they beat Canada here in the final. Canada will get silver. So not only do the men win an incredible bronze medal game, the women, they get gold. What a performance. Hortense Limousin, Leticia Guapo, Maria Page, Miriam J. Kundade beating the Canadians with the gold medal. They embrace an emotional day for any person from France. Julian Debose from France, and he's standing by with Maria Page. Jew. Mariev, uh, first of all, uh, a question about the final. We knew that this Canadian team was really, really good. The Plouffe sisters are maybe two of the best players on the circuit, but you came prepared. We saw you on the free throw line in the last seconds of the game with a lot of pressure. Describe how it was for you on the free throw line and during the whole game. Uh, yes, for sure, the, um, the Canada team is really a great team. 
You are not on the final if you are not a great team. We play against them um, in a friendly game before the World Cup and we lost twice. Uh, so it's a revenge and I'm really proud of my team about that. And yeah, for sure, it's a lot of pressure at the end, but I prefer to be front of the team and not behind and just one free throw was enough. So I'm really happy. So we, we had a, a crazy game just after your game from the French national team winning the bronze medal. And then you come here. They said that it was a transitional team, that you, you had a mixture of experience and young players that, you know, maybe it wasn't, a, it was just a transitional team, but yet at the end of the tournament, you're a world champion. How does it feel? I'm not sure to understand all the, the, the question, but um, the, the main team, I think they were really underdog because they came for the few players was the first time for in an official competition and they fight, they finish the last game with three against the host team. It's really hard to play them, the Belgium team, because they are really good. And yeah, I'm really proud. They, we have a medal, we are the winner and the, 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 the men has the bronze medal. So it's amazing for France, it's two, two results and I'm really proud of team France in general. You're, yeah, you're a world champion. What's the, what's the biggest feeling? How do you compare to winning the Europe Cup twice? How different is it now? I think right now I don't realize what we did. But you know, when you finish fourth in the Olympics, when you, you lost in semi-final at home, and now we are world champions, that's amazing. That's the first time for me in an official competition. So I'm really, really happy, and I will celebrate this tonight. All right, this is your moment. Enjoy it. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, congratulations to Le Bleu. This was an incredible run to the gold medal for France, and, and they have had some trials and tribulations over the years, and the Olympic uh, disappointment of not meddling and never having won a gold medal until this year. 2022 here in Antwerp proved to be a French frenzy. The men reached the podium, the women reached the gold medal game against a dangerous Canadian team. And they went at their neck like a top button. So much fight for the French today. Took a look at uh, Hortense Limousson. She was getting in her bag. Maria Page, Met was wet. Leticia Guapo could be on her way to an MVP. I mean, she was incredible. The new additions meshed well with the veterans. It wasn't easy, especially going against the Blue Sisters. Michelle was a one-woman wrecking crew for stretches during this game. Catherine getting it done as well. They did not get as good a shooting from outside from any of the four players as they would have liked, which was something that we saw for most of the tournament for Canada. So Page, she will put it away at the line. Nothing but love from France as Seguela and Guapo celebrate together. The lovely couple who will both be going home with some new precious medals. 16-13, the final for France over Canada. We've got one more piece of unfinished business. The men's final coming up. Serbia, Lithuania on deck. I would tell you don't go nowhere, but I know you won't. It's on the way.
What a beautiful shot from here in the Flanders region, Antwerp, Belgium. We have reached the final game of the competition that again started with 40 teams, 20 men's teams, 20 women's teams, and only two remain. The number one seed, Serbia. The number two seed, Lithuania. Both teams undefeated. You couldn't script it any better. Bring your best play right. This will be the story that steals the show in a day that has been unbelievable. So many incredible games. There'll be so many conversations about this tournament tomorrow. Serbia, the gold standard in 3x3. They've won four. They still want more. 2012, 2016, 17, 18. All gold medals for Serbia. Dejan Majsorovic with three. Brankovic and the rest of the crew with no world championships. They are searching for their first. Lithuania, how good have these dudes been? They say to be the best, they got to beat the best. And their chance is in front of them right here. Gold medal on the line. As they get ready to come out of the smoke and take center stage, Ignis Vajkus. He's the top scorer for Lithuania with 39 points. The second leading man on this Lithuanian squad is Darius Tarvidis. He's got 39. The Uzi, Marius Ujupis. He now joins this crew with 24 points to his name. And Gentautis Matulis, a 23-point scorer. Serbia's top gun, Dejan Majsorovic. Number five on the scoring charts coming into this one. He's got 40 big ones. He doesn't care about his stats. He does, however, care about being the most decorated Serbian 3x3 player of all time. And we have two Olympic officials to handle this game with care. Edmund Holtz at Celia Dort, the men's final in front of us. Kyle Montgomery, a.k.a. the voice in your ear. How fun has this been? Don't answer that. Tell me later. Hit me up at 3x3 The Voice. <laughs> There's the world number one, Strainja Stojicic. They are dealing with a different Lithuanian team. I am telling you, it's a rematch of last year's Europe Cup in Paris, in front of the Eiffel Tower. Now we're in front of the Cathedral of Our Lady, here from Grunplatz. Lithuania have lost all three times against Serbia. And as I just mentioned, that Europe Cup final, they have not forgotten about it. Trust and believe. Dejan Majsorovic says that they know due to their past success that it's pretty much Serbia against the world. He wants to be the most decorated Serbian 3x3 player of all time. And again, a goal would be his fourth. Can he do it here in 2022? We're going to see what the maestro can orchestrate as we are underway. Ignis Vajkus pulls the trigger. It comes up for, uh, off the front of the iron. Majstorovic, long two-piece, no. Brankila tracks it down. The maestro over to Dr. Strange. Strainja driving hard, finishes soft with the leg. 
Serbia draws first blood, and it's a foul on Serbia. Dardius Tarvid is guarded by Mihailo Vasic. Vaske will switch it. Both these teams have the benefit of size, strength, and length. That was a long one rolled out. So they had the ability to switch defensively. It's a luxury that not every team has. So on comes Serbia. Strainia sets his feet. One flick of the wrist. Swish, swish. The two ball has Serbia up 3-0 out of the gates. They know about the target on their back. They know that Lithuania is bringing their best shot. Tarvidis, long ball. It's a miss. Stojicic, no. Oh, and Vasque and the maestro miscommunicate as that one's thrown away. So around comes Uzupis. Uzupis actually called for the foul as he laughs that one off. It was Vyakus taking the handoff, but Jupis was not set. Lithuania is still looking for the first bucket as the maestro steps behind the line. String music. He's in his playlist. Five zip. Vyakus has it poked away. Tarvinis. He airmails it. It's missed and no tip. Dayan, oh, that one comes off the rim. A narrow miss as Lithuania will try to weather this early storm. That's a nice find. Stojicic, no. Oh, has he? Dr. Strange coming to the rack. The Beast, patient point and a warning for defending inside the semicircle after the main bucket. But the Serbians, you, you would think that this was Serbia. You can hear that crowd going. Here in the Lions' den. They got their own traveling fan section. Oh, it's Uzi blew it. Majstorovic. To Vasic, Vaske. Man, he's strong. Seven one. There's that Serbian fan section I was telling you about. They are in here. Tarvidis comes around. Foul on Vaske. I've been able to see Serbia's run the goal three times before in that three-peat, 16, 17, 18, an all-new team this year. Dejan Majsorovic in his fifth. And he picks up the fourth foul on Serbia, 7-1. Here we go. Darius Tavides with the maestro in hot pursuit. He loses him. Left him in the rear view and finished with the lay. Dr. Strange gives it up to the Manimal. The Manimal. Whoa, Kimo Sabi. Big balling is his hobby. The serves with a big lead early. It's the first break after seven minutes, a TV timeout. And we'll listen into the Serbian huddle.
Baiku starts the possession for Lithuania. Uzi steps back. No rim needed. All net. Foul green. Just number three. Serbian chants are taking over the venue. Maestro to Vasic, patience pays. Oh, nice bullet pass to set up for Tulis. Lithuanians back within five. Darius Tarvidis on that European silver medal team last year. Oh, Stojicic is a Stoja swish. Seven point advantage. Vaikus attacks the rack. Now, Dr. Strange. He's tied up. Travels call. Shuffle his feet. Take another look. Vaikus got in there to uh, mix it up and he makes the signal. Vaikus tried it with the right hand on the left side of the rim. Serbia leads it by six. Off the maestro miss, it's Tarvidis. Five and a half to play. Oh, he lost him. You can find him in the lost and found now. The beast with a filthy move. That's a big strike right back. And Vasque turns around, puts it down. 13-8, Serbia. Tarvidis in the face. It's 13-10. Lithuania ain't going nowhere like an unwelcome guest. They're starting to make their presence felt here. And both Fan contingents are having a battle themselves. The Serbian chants are battling the Lithuanian chants. Five minutes to play, and a game separated by three. Dr. Strange in the lane. Tarvidis nearly stolen. Maestro goes down, as does Ubi. Tar Tarvidis is wide open, and he's going to put the cookie in the cup. Game stays at a three point distance. The Beast is fouled on the block. That's number five on Lithuania, joining Serbia, who have five fouls too. 14, 11, 435 to go. Oh, Vasic all alone. Easy. Uzi, turnaround, short range, not that time. 
Majsorovic, he has got it off safety. He is spraying the place. Ain't nobody safe. 17-11. As the Serbs will get try to get it to the hot hand, they want to win this for Majsorovic. You better believe it. Stojicic misses. The nice seal underneath as Vike, as Matulis actually gets that score. Lithuania still within reach. It's a four point contest. Dr. Strange with the Hezzy. Dr. Strange, count that, and one. Dr. Strange with some sorcery. He drives strong to the left and withstands the contact. 18-13, Serbia. One shot here for the world number one, Stradnja Stojicic. That's good. Serbia has been great. 19 to 13. Slick pass. Lithuania going to need some help. Oh, Dr. Strange. This is his best performance <laughs> since Multiverse of Madness. 20 to 15. That ball in the hand of Dr. Strange. He will pull up, but he doesn't put it away. Vaikus, off balance, makes the layup. Foul green. Brankovic shooting two. That was Lithuania's seventh foul. Marko Brankovic in his first World Cup. He pulls the trigger and he's got the gold finger. Serbia win gold for the fourth time. They do it here in Antwerp over Lithuania. The maestro, now the most decorated. Serbian 3x3 player in the history of the game. His fourth as he takes it all in. And the Serbian fans in this place are on their feet. It's party time. Mihailo Vasic, Marko Brankovic, Dejan Majstorovic, Strajinja Stojicic. What a moment. What a moment as Vasic and Stojicic and Brankovic get their first world title, their first gold. Dejamaj Stojicic has been here before. Four, the operative word and number as we get it over to Julian Dubov, who's setting up to talk with now the winningest Serbian 3x3 player in terms of the World Cup history. Ju, over to you and Dejan. Dejan, Dejan, first of all, one question about the final. 
Lithuania had a great tournament, they have great players, but in this tournament you didn't lose a single game. You had an amazing crowd cheering for you and you had almost a perfect game. Uh, first of all, I want to congratulate uh, Team Lithuania. They have an awesome uh, tournament. Uh, they deserve to be here and congrats to them. Uh, we play amazing tournament. We have a lot of energy. We want to to championship from World Cup. Uh, be back in Serbia. This is fifth for us. We will. Uh, I hope we will play. Keep playing in this way and to get a lot of more medals from the national team tournament. And thank you to our fans. They are amazing. Without them, it's much difficult. They was here when we play semi-final against everybody. We feel that support and it means a lot to us. Dayan, when we spoke a few days ago, you explained to me that your father has a little book where he keeps... anything. When we spoke the other day, this week, you explained to me that your father, he has a book with all the articles that are written about you in Starobanovci. It's going to be a much bigger book now because you're becoming the player with the most World Cup wins. It's your fourth World Cup trophy. How special is this one? It's amazing feeling. Four times to be the, the champions of the world is amazing. I now have the same as Dusan and Savic. And yes, my father have the book. When he started doing that, it was a little bit boring for me, but now it's amazing because I have two very big books with my pictures and tournaments we won. He sent me every day some pictures from the newspaper from Serbia. I just sent him like, okay, thank you, and that's it. It's amazing. Oh, it's Congrats, man. All right, as the Serbians celebrate, as I'm sure they're going to be doing well into the night, maybe even the morning, <laughs> here in Antwerp. Uh, they deserve it. What an accomplishment. And especially for Dejan Majsorovic, they were talking about that book that his dad has. I actually got a chance to go to that house and meet his father and see that book. Maybe I'll share that on my Instagram uh, coming up. That was uh, quite a moment, quite a game, quite a day that came down to this. Lithuania, Serbia for gold. Here from Grunplatz in Antwerp. Dr. Strange stepped his game up a notch as he provided a hot start for the Serbians. Nobody hotter than the maestro who had lost his touch a little bit from deep, only for a short time, but he was cooking in this one. There was Dr. Strange showing the range. He was marvelous. Darius Tarvidas, he found the stroke there, but as this game wore on, you remember Lithuania said that uh, to be the best, you gotta beat the best. They found out that Serbia are the best for a reason. Dejan Majstorovic has been a constant. And with the new additions and the new number one, he's a new star. Dr. Strange, he's different. Marko Vrankovic, the youngest member on this team with that stroke right there, his team become gold medalists here at the World Cup. Him for the first time, Serbia for the fourth time. Stejan Majstorovic gets it done. Excuse me, for the fifth time. I can't short them a gold medal. They'll come and get me. <laughs> 2012, 2016, 17, 18, and now here in 2022. Serbia, they reign supreme in 3x3. This Krilan FIBA 3x3 World Cup has now reached the ceremony portion, and this is where we get to see each team get awarded the medals that they work so hard for. Teams from all over the world, all regions, all corners, Asia, Europe, North America, South America, Oceania, uh, they were all here all with the same goal in mind, but in the end, only one team could stand above the rest for 3x3 supremacy. 
we see that those teams are France and Serbia. France women, Serbian men. Canada take silver for the women. China take bronze for the women. Obviously, you see Lithuania will have a silver medal. Plenty to be proud about. They should be celebrating tonight as well. Even though it wasn't the medal that they had hoped for, France, man, they might be the story of the day. France uh, getting a medal with both the men's and women's teams. The men's team doing it with three players against the odds against Belgium in their own backyard. So many storylines, the plots and subplots were aplenty. And this action was, maybe this, this might have been the best 3x3 tournament I, I can remember. The crowd was unbelievable the entire time, six day tournament as our MVP has been announced. Our MVP for the women is Leticia Guapo, the former world number one. Nobody was better than her as she leads France to their first gold at this competition. La Guapa with a smile and a well-deserved MVP award. She will not forget about it. 36 points to lead the way for France. And she is the women's MVP of the Creelon FIBA 3x3 World Cup 2022. Take another look. Nice plaque for her. And what an accomplishment. Congratulations. Leticia Guapo. She's going to be joined by her team of the tournament members. Lily Wang of China and Michelle Plouf. Lily Wang with 35 points. One of the leaders in player value and Michelle Plouf. Just a, the dominant Canadian who came up short. She had 35 points as well. These are premier players in 3x3. We hope to have them for a long time. There's your team of the tournament. Leticia Guapo, the MVP. So now it's time to hear who the men's MVP. I got a sneaky suspicion. It might be that man, the maestro. Dejan Majsorovic with the Serbian flag on his back and his country across his chest. He's all smiles as he's standing in the spotlight for, the, for a long time on his pro team, Novi Sad, and on the national team, you know, playing amongst 3x3 greats, he had to find his role. Now, he's the one, he's the man, the maestro, MVP, here at the 2022 Creelon FIBA 3x3 World Cup. Now, and where's his dad gonna put that? Men team of the tournament. I'm they sure he'll find a spot. From Serbia, from Benjamin, congratulations, congratulations. Benjamin, Indeed. Benjamin, now let's see who joins Benjamin, him on the team of the tournament. Men team of the tournament. Thibaut Vorvort. The young Belgian star who does not come away with a medal, but he does have an individual accolade. And Ignis Vaitkus of Lithuania. They represent your team of the tournament for the men. Vaitkus with 44 points, third on the scoring charts. Or fourth with 41. The Maestro with 44. So 100 games at the very, I stopped counting. I stopped counting and after now, 80. <laughs> over 100 games of action, of over six days of play. 
It culminates with this. So the individual awards have been handed out. It's time for the team awards to now be given. Bronze medalist on the FIBA 3A3 FIBA Canal World Cup 2022. Give it up for Team China! Our bronze medalist now being introduced, Team China. They will enter the court and step into the limelight. Well deserved. Jiting Jang, their leading scorer, 42 points. He averaged six a game. Li Li Wang, of course, a member of the team of the tournament. Outstanding body of work for her. Team China, Ju Wen Tao, Ji Wang Wang, Zi Ting Zong, Li Li Wang. They got the China flag out. They will wave it proudly. Bronze medalist on the FIBA 3A3. And a lot to be, a, be proud of. This Chinese team, Ji Wan Wan and Jun Wei Sao, joining Li Li Wang and Zai Ting Chang as bronze medalists. They defend gold as a country, but they will not be leaving empty handed. They have a bronze this year, and now, three years after that uh, 2019 Silver gold. On the FIBA 3A3 World Cup. The silver medaille wordt uitgereikt door de enige echte burgemeester van Antwerpen, Bart de Wever. Silver medaille team on the FIBA 3 x 3 Canada World Cup. Give it up for Team Canada! Number four, silver Casey medal. Bunch. Number two, Captain Canada. Blue. Number one, here they come. And Casey seven, Bosch, Team Paige Crozon. Michelle and Catherine Plouf. They finished just shy of what their goal was. But a tournament to be proud of. The Plouf sisters with 42 points and 38 combined, or 38 respectively rather. Michelle with 42, Kat with 38. They led their team to the gold medal game, but come up just short against a France team that would not be denied. But it's their time to shine as well. Silver medalists here in Antwerp, Canada. Expecting big things from them in the future. Ladies and gentlemen, gold medal on the FIBA 3A3 World Cup. Gold medal, what has it? Opnieuw, the Burgemeester van Antwerpen, Bart Wever. Gold medalist team on the FIBA 3 x 3 Canada the gold medalist, there can only be one. Give it up for And France, France. they had to have it. Number Their five. first gold Number medal eight. at the Go World ahead. Cup. Number 12, Les Bleu, here they come. Led by the two Olympians, Leticia Guapo and Marie Page. Jean-Pierre Souta, and Miriam Jay Kundade. Those are big smiles. They did it big here in Antwerp. Man, it was a France takeover. Such emotion in those games that they played today. They are the two seed and they were able to stop on the, the Pooh sisters who have been dominating throughout the tournament. They got a little revenge on the way. And now they got gold. Congratulations to Team France. Team France. Your 2022 Creeland FIBA 3X3 FIBA World, FIBA Cup World Cup gold medalist. Aman Nyong, president of FIBA. The trophy is presented by Amanyang, FIBA president.
So there are all of our medalists here in Antwerp in the women's competition. France take gold, Canada get silver, China get bronze. And a photo op with FIBA president, Amane Niang. Ladies and please remain silent for the national anthem And it is time to hear the French national anthem as their country reigns supreme here in Antwerp. medalists from this competition on the women's side. We will show you now the men's team awards. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to start the prize giving ceremony for the men competition. We will start with the prize of the bronze medal. And the prize will be given to the Minister of Sport van Vlaanderen, Bim Bags. Bronze medalist. On the FIBA 3x3 World Cup 2022. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the bronze medalist team of the competition. Third place, give it up for Team France! Number four, Leopold Cavalier. Number 15, Alex. All right, how come the bronze medalist? What a performance, and there are people still here standing on their feet. You, nothing but respect for this team. Anton Ato, he got in, he injured his ankle to the point to where he was not able to compete in that third place game, but he gave his team everything he had. I mean everything. From the bench, inspiration, strategy. He laid his heart in it and they fed off of it. And that is a bronze. That feels like a gold, I'm telling you. So credit to Franz Seguela, Leo Cavalier, Anton Eto, and my guy Vierare, Alex Vierare. They go and celebrate with the French ladies. France is going to be partying tonight as well here in Antwerp. The team Cheers to them and congrats. Your silver medalist. This star studded cast of Lithuanians. They come out after falling short to only the team that's not ranked number one. They come out with Marius Ujumpis, Darius Tarvidis, Ignis Vaidkus, and Gentautis Matulis. They win a silver medal. And Hadn't lost a single game until that gold medal game. They have, got, they have a lot to be encouraged about. And just a moment, ladies and gentlemen, we have a special moment. We have a the Lithuanian ladies moment. are now coming out who came up short in their quest, but something special is happening here. Uh, first of all, uh, 
I met her. I met her in 2019 Euro Cup quarterfinals, and now we're here. I'm sorry, I don't have a ring. I will give you this medal. Will you marry me? Marius Ujupis proposes to his fiance, Martina Petronite, after he wins a silver medal here at the World Cup. He just won a lifetime partner. There's no bigger prize than that. Wow, congratulations, congratulations. <laughs> Marius Ujupis. And Martina Petronite, what a moment. Wow. I better get an invite to the wedding. <laughs> wow, that, uh, that was unforgettable. We had no idea about that. But now it's time to celebrate the Serbians. They earned it. This is their moment. And here they come. Dejan Majsorovic with gold number four. Marko Brankovic and Mihailo Vasic with gold number one at the World Cup, as well as Dr. Strange, Strajinja Stojicic. They are the gold standard and they prove it yet again. Serbia, they win it here at the 2022 Krylon FIBA 3x3 World Cup. They're gonna be playing a Serbian anthem upcoming and expect to hear a bunch of Serbian music tonight. Serbia stand up. All they do is win. They need to bring DJ Khaled out too. One final hoist for them. <laughs> and their own personal cheer section. We all show our respect and listen to the Serbians national anthem. In a couple of seconds. With the podium, the national team of Serbia, with the first best in the second and the third. Team France, Team Lithuania, and Serbia. Ladies and gentlemen, remain silent for the national team of Serbia. Dames and gentlemen, nog enkele minuten gaan van start gaan met het nationaal volkslied van Serbië. Once again, a congratulations to all of our participating teams, 40 of the best from around the world, 27 countries represented over six days of action here in Antwerp, Belgium, from the Flanders region. The teams are celebrating on the court. 
The fans are celebrating here and at home. We thank you for watching. We will show you each team's run to go as the celebration continues here in Antwerp. Graffiti is falling. We see who's still standing. Serbia, the best of the best for the men. France, the best of the best for the women. It's a celebration for everybody in here. I got confetti falling on me. <laughs> oh, man. A lot more There's coming up uh, with FIBA 3X3. We'll have the Asia Cup coming your way on the fifth, beginning of the 5th of July. Here's the last look at the bracket as France makes their run to gold, beating Canada 16 to 13 in that gold medal game. Serbia's run, beating Latvia, beating Belgium, and then beating Lithuania en route to a fourth gold medal. We sure hope y'all enjoyed it. I know I did. A hundred games have been put away. Credit to our production crew in the truck. Bogdan, Alexa, and everyone else, Julian DeBove, Esteban Gonzalez, Rachel Rominger, all of our officials who did an outstanding job, all the camera people, our DJs, DJ Lass, our MCs, MC Vincent Royette, MC Lightning, DJ Dysfunctional as well. A lot of people to thank, but thank you all the most for watching. I'm Kyle Montgomery, AKA the voice of 3X3. All love for me, but that's it from Antwerp and the 2022 World Cup. We will see you soon as 3X3 is coming your way in a couple of weeks. Bye y'all, holla.